Okay, Joe, you're now live. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, welcome, welcome to this virtual hitching committee. It's been conducted with members and officers at various locations, uh, communicating via audio and video online. My name's uh, Councillor Ian Albert. I'll be chairing the meeting uh, this evening. Um, before the meeting starts, I would like to invite the committee member and scrutiny officer, William Edwards, to explain how proceedings will work and to confirm that members and officers are in attendance. William, I'd like to do the roll call and, and proceedings. Thank you very much, Chair. When I call your name, can you please indicate your attendance to confirm that the required members, officers and registered members of the public are present, can hear and be heard. Uh, if it's okay, I will start with everybody's surnames. Councillor Albert? Yes. Councillor Claire Billing? I'm here. Councillor Judy Billing? I'm sort of here, yeah. Councillor Bryant? Here. Councillor Clark? Here. Councillor Collins. Hello. Councillor Dennis Harburg. Here. Councillor Harwood. Here. Councillor Hoskins. Yes, good evening. Councillor Hewson. I am. Councillor Steers Hanscom. Here. We have apologies from Councillor Tart and Councillor Thake. Not present. Uh, Mr. Tony Williams. Here. Thank you. Lisa King. Here. And Tom Hardy. Yeah, here. Thank you very much. And the officers, Matthew Hepburn. Here. Katie Stadden. Present. And thank you to Vic Godfrey, who is broadcasting us to the internet. Uh, this meeting is being streamed live on the Council's YouTube channel and Zoom. If the live streaming fails, the meeting will adjourn. If the live stream cannot be restored within a reasonable period, then the remaining business will be considered at a time and date fixed by the chair. If the chair does not fix a date, the remaining business will be considered at the next ordinary meeting. If for any reason the meeting is not corrupt, an officer will notify attendees by interjecting the meeting. The meeting will adjourn immediately. Once the meeting is corrupt, the meeting will resume. If connection cannot be restored within a reasonable period, then the remaining business will be considered at a time and date fixed by the chair. If the chair does not fix a date, the remaining business will be considered at the next ordinary meeting. If a remote member loses connection, the chair may adjourn the meeting for a short period to enable connection to be re-established. If the chair does not adjourn the meeting, the member will be deemed to have left the meeting at the point of failure and be deemed to have returned at the point of re-establishment. Only members present for the entirety of debate and consideration of an item are entitled to vote. If technology fails for a member of the public who attends to participate and is unable to do so, the chair may decide to adjourn or proceed to the next item of business to allow for connection to be re-established. If connection cannot be restored within a reasonable period, the chair can decide to conclude the remaining business. If a member or member of the public drops out of the meeting and is unable to connect by video, an email has been sent out to each of you, which includes options for connecting by telephone. Please ensure that your electronic devices are muted. Please activate the mute button on your tablet or your computer when you are not speaking. If a member wishes to speak, they should use the raise hand button, and this will alert the host that you wish to speak. The host will inform the chair of the names of the speakers who should wait to be invited by the chair to address the committee. Please can I remind you that the normal procedure rules in respect of debate and times to speak will apply. I'm sorry, I'm not on video. Uh, when requested to vote, voting will be via the green tick, yes, the red cross for no, and the blue raise hand to abstain at the bottom of your screen. To enable the votes to be counted, please do not clear your vote until requested to do so. Details of how members vote will not be kept or minuted unless a recorded vote was requested or an individual requests that their vote be recorded. And this will not be heard or seen on the audio and YouTube recordings of the meeting. The committee member and scrutiny officer will clearly state the result of the vote and the chair will proceed to the next agenda item. In the event of a tied vote, the chair will have the casting vote. Are there any questions before we start the meeting? No, thank you. Then over to you, Councillor Albert. Thank 
you, uh, thank you, William, and um, and thank you, uh, welcome, William, for, to uh, your your first meeting of the uh, Hitching Hitching Committee. So, well, welcome. It's really good to uh, have you with us this evening. Um, apologies for absence. I think um, we've got Count, Councillor Tart, Councillor Thake, were there? Any other apologies from uh, from members? None if, that I have on record. No. Okay. If nothing, nothing else from. Um, notification of other business, there's none advised. Um, just some short announcements. Thank you to those who attended Town Talk earlier and welcome to those who are speaking at the public participation uh, section. In accordance with council policy, this meeting has been audio recorded as well as filmed. The audio recordings will be available to view on ModGov and the film, film recording via the NHDC YouTube channel. Members are reminded to make uh, declarations of interest before an item. The detailed reminder about this and speaking rights is set out under the chair's announcements on the agenda. I've agreed that the pitching bid manager can speak before the public participation. I've also agreed that the grants of community update will be taken immediately following the public, public participation and probably also just a, a final welcome to obviously anyone, any members of the public uh, watching on YouTube uh, this evening. Um, so that takes us then through to item four, which is the Hitchin Bid Manager Report and welcome as usual to uh, Tom Hardy for your update. Welcome Tom and over to you. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> so I was trying to look up what I've what I updated you on before because there's quite a lot happened since um, since I last gave you an update, I think, uh, I mean, the regular business support is still ongoing. So I send out um, regular emails to businesses as um, we sort of act as a support hub. So when we get information coming in from local or central government, we um, pick out the bits that are important and relevant to uh, businesses and, and send out information to them. Um, the Eat Al Fresco um, opportunities that we've been offering businesses where if they've got limited outdoor spaces um, we've been allowing them to go on the marketplace has been quite successful we've had uh, buskers um, out on the marketplace uh, we've had five usually five different restaurants it's carrying on on a sort of week by week basis um, and we're then moving into November where we plan hopefully on having a a Christmas market so one of these with the Christmas market chalets um, we're only offering those to uh, Hitchin town centre businesses so it's a way of um, them being able to bring their Christmas stock and sell their Christmas stock without um, over overstocking their shop and not not allowing the correct social distancing um, and also you know it's something that the public's been quite keen on seeing as well um, we're still doing PPE. Uh, we have um, sold about 13,500 masks so far uh, to the public and to businesses. Um, we've still got the two metre floor stickers for outside and, and the hand sanitizers, and we've still got masks. So um, they, are, they are going and, and businesses are benefiting from the fact that we bought them in bulk and we sell them at, at the cost price. Um, with the sanitize the sanitize outdoor sanitizer stands we've still got around around the town um few have been vandalized but we um, managed to replace the equipment quite quickly and get them out um, they're being used probably about half we have to fill them up by about half every day um so they definitely are being used by members of the public um we've also got social distancing signage out and um we're i'm working with the Economic Development Officer, Andrew Figgis, on opening High Street Safely Fund, which is a um, government funding for, um, for the UK and um, the District Council can apply for the funding. So we're working, all, uh, all three bids in the district are working towards a, a bid for that. Um, I've also joined um, the Hitchin Markets boards uh, to offer some support there and bring them in into, this, into the bigger uh, town town centre scheme and the town centre plan uh, in terms of events and um, all the different things that we do as a bid and um, opening it up to be a bit more inclusive. Um, our normal day to day has uh, is back up uh, and running, so we do have 
our cardboard rangers are out. We are now collecting from about 260 businesses on a weekly basis. Uh, our rangers around the town. Um, we've just finished our floral display, which should be collected soon. Um, and we're then moving into the Christmas lights. The Christmas lights should be going up on the 28th, roughly about the 28th of October. Um, that's just because we had some issues with power and, and things like that last year. So if you do see them going up, we're not switching them on. We're just uh, running um, some tests early so that we can get them um, properly working. Um, the Christmas tree, um, myself and Councillor Albert chose it um, a month or so ago, or two months ago. Um, so that's gonna be put up around about the 18th of November. And we're looking to do a community project where um, groups can paint giant baubles that, and hang them on the tree, sort of to make it a bit more of a community uh, Christmas tree. Um, the light switch on obviously can't happen in the same way it did last year. Um, our plan is to have Santa on the sleigh with the Christmas light switch on, the Christmas tree light switch on box. Um, and we're going to do a carrying of the Christmas tree uh, star. So the star that normally goes on the tree, they will be passed from business to business all the way through the town, almost like a uh, Olympic torch until it gets to the tree and then it will be placed on the tree and Santa will go into St Mary's Church, push the um, uh, plunger down and then the lights will come on and that will all be live streamed. So it's a kind of an alternative way of being able to recognise the hard work that businesses have put in over this period and also including the, the uh, essential businesses that have stayed open over lockdown um, to supply the, the people of Hitchin. So it's, it's a kind of recognition really. Um, we, so the Christmas, I've mentioned the Christmas market, we've had a few um, openings in the town. So we've got new uh, hairdressers, uh, two new hairdressers actually, Alter on High Street, um, and um, we've got uh, a new one in Church Church Gate. Uh, we've got Neighbourhood Bakes on Bucklersbury that's just recently opened. A new Korean cafe on Brand Street. We have a new Mediterranean restaurant called Kaz Bar uh, in Churchyard. And the signing rooms are finally uh, properly up, back and up and running. Where they they're on Sun Street. Um, they're a sort of uh, children's young people signing rooms um hawkins and um, the old hawkins units i've been told that all three of them all three units have been let um they've signed the leases on all three and um I, I don't know any more than that but they're hoping to get them in um well one of them in potentially before christmas or if not early next year um but yeah, that's it really. I mean, we, we, things are moving in the town. Um, generally, businesses are doing generally slightly better than they expected. And I don't know whether that's because um, shopping local was a lot more higher in people's minds over the lockdown and, and really it's all been in all the news. Or um, we have had a, I worked out, we've had about a 17.5% increase in population during the middle of the week due to people not traveling into London. And I have found that some of the higher end shops are finding themselves busier because possibly because the people that aren't going into London are, are, are shopping in there. So yeah, it's been interesting. Some, some obviously are, are really struggling still and, and not doing so well, but um, generally it's, it's been slightly better than they, they, had, they had expected. Um, are there any questions? Yeah, I think I've got um, got a hand, an early, early hand from uh, Judy Billings. So Judy, and then Paul Clark. Thank you, Chair. Um, hello, Tom. Hello. I, I woke up in the south of Spain today. I mean, I hadn't been kidnapped or anything. I knew I was there um, and I was coming home. But I'm never far from Radio 4, even when I'm in the south of Spain. And I was interested to hear the boss of Hotel Chocolat talking about the problems that they're having around the country but he gave a list of places where things are going very well indeed and that included Hitchin and I didn't know whether you'd heard that um, and it kind of feeds a notion that I have that those businesses that are surviving are surviving rather better in small market towns like Hitchin 
than they are in some rather large accommodations. And I just wonder whether that's your perception um, and whether you've got any comment to make about that. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I mean, the, we have had, although we've had, so it's about five, I think I worked it out to be about 5,200 additional people in the town, um, living in the town centre and using the town centre. But yeah, I, I think that satellite towns around cities are faring better, but I also think that people are more aware now of local businesses and using a town centre. And I think that's really been hammered home by a lot of the stuff in the press about how, how businesses are really struggling and having to lock down and, and um, people were using the town centre a lot over lockdown because they didn't want to queue for the supermarket. They would go to the greengrocers and the butchers. So this sort of local shopping is, is sort of formed um, quite strongly in the town. Yeah. I think if I can just add one more thing to that, Ian, um, oh, yeah. your permission, I think there's also a sense of actually not wanting to go to a shopping mall and not particularly feeling that a shopping mall, an out of town or, or even a, um, a city shopping mall is a particularly safe place to be. And mm -hmm. um, the kind of open air between shops in a place like Hitchin, I think is helping as well. So I know it's nothing to be pleased about in an odd sort of way, but in another way it is that actually Hitchin might fare fairly well um, amongst those businesses that survive. I think they will survive and thrive. Thank mm -hmm. you. Thanks, thanks, Judy. Uh, Paul Clark. Thank you. Just wanted to cover a couple of areas. One, the access to the high street um, for deliveries and for disabled people. Because uh, am I right? It's ten till five, isn't it? That it's sh it's shut. Uh, somebody did say ten till four earlier, but I just wanted to clarify that. Is it causing any problems for people for deliveries for the businesses and for disabled people getting? Uh, there. The other thing was um, at the bottom of Nightingale Road, um, there's a lot of takeaway shops and uh, uh, supermarkets. And there was in the town talk, there was a concern about people parking on the double yellow lines. I know it's not necessarily the business's fault uh, doing that. Have you come across any issues down there? Um, I think I'm not hugely involved in the Nightingale Road businesses because they're not actually in the business improvement district area um, but I have we have had some issues with uh, double yellow parking in the town and I, I well, all I can do is report that to the appropriate officer of the council which I have done um, you know and I, I get that the council stretched on on keeping on top of all areas um, but if 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 they're highlighted I suppose if they're highlighted the areas that need a little bit more attention that, that can only help um with the high street closing um yeah i mean there's been some some issues um there's been some loud voices in the town um about um how it's it's had a negative effect on businesses i've been to personally speak to quite a number of them and it's a difficult one because they're not sure whether they're affected by the road closure or whether they're affected by covid because they both sort of happen at the same time um, I have actually asked Hearts County Council if they can, now that we've had it closed for about two and a half months, to run a, um, a like a survey with us on the businesses and potentially the public as well, just to get an idea on on what their thoughts are on it and whether it needs adjusting and um, and how it's had an effect on the public and also how it's had an effect on businesses. We, it's a, it's a quite a fine balance between having something that gives pedestrian priority but also having something that doesn't interfere too much with business operations and we have found that there are a, it's very very busy before 10 o'clock in the town with deliveries very busy so it's obviously there are some um things that are adapting i think it's helpful that our rangers are dealing with the road closure now because we've got that element of discretion um around letting people in if they've they desperately need that delivery that day and it, they can't get it any other time and you know various reasons like that so yeah um hopefully we'll get some we'll get a survey out and we can we can understand exactly how they feel yes thanks thank you thanks tom um sorry did you want to come back on that paul no okay um mike houston thanks ian and and thanks tom and thanks to you and your team for 
all the work you've been doing with 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 local businesses during these difficult times. Um, I just wanted to ask: did, did I hear you right and say a Korean cafe had opened, or did I mishear that? Yeah, it was a Korean cafe. Yeah, Korean street food they do. Sounds amazing. Yeah, Looking it's cool. on Brand Street, just down from the museum. I can't wait. Yeah, I'm all over that. All right. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I've got, you, you put you quite put me off now. <laughs> yeah, that was a very good question. Um, Keith, Keith Hoskins. Yeah, thanks, Ian. Um, yeah, going back to the um, street closure, I mean, anecdotally, I think um, I've had nothing but enthusiastic support from residents, which is why I'm pleased that um, Tom is saying if we're urging to do a survey that we do include um, residents as well. I know when we used to do on-street surveys for, for the bid, um, we got some good responses back. And um, I, I think that's important because I, whilst, whilst there may be one or two businesses, I think that are doubtful about uh, uh, the high street closure, I, I think overwhelmingly the public is going to be supportive of that. Um, as far as I'm concerned, the only problems we still have with parking are Bucklersbury. And we've mentioned this before, and it was mentioned during town talk as well. And I, I, I don't, really don't think we're going to cure uh, any of these town centre parking or through traffic problems until we have a comprehensive review of how we deal with traffic in the town centre whether it's flowing the right way, whether it needs to be a more permanent closure, whether we, how far we go with it. So I'm, I'm urging in this public forum as well that we get on and do a transport survey. Yes, thanks, Keith. Um, uh, Simon, Simon Harwood next, and then perhaps then bring back Tom. Thank you, Chair. Um, yes, Tom, just, a, just again from me, a public, um, uh, thanks for, for everything you and, and your colleagues have, have done. Uh, you know, the, the, the town is, is buzzing uh, and it's quite visible when you just walk through town on a daily basis, how well it is doing. And we are terribly lucky to live here. And, and, and I am grateful to you and your team for, for doing it. I think, just to stress what you said before, I think the marketplace thing has been a, a real success with the cafes. I'm really excited to hear. I didn't actually know about that Christmas market plan. I, I think that's superb. And, and I know um, probably the heritage team wouldn't like this, but if you've ever had uh, time to pop up to uh, the Highlander pub, uh, they've come up with an ingenious system of uh, a sort of awning uh, that goes over the top. Um, that's an amazing system for sort of all weather dining. Again, I don't think it would probably uh, go down with the heritage folk too well. Uh, but certainly some sort of 24-7, 365 solution uh, where we could have that permanently uh, would, would be uh, absolutely amazing. Um, just on the, um, on, on the through road piece, of course, obviously support uh, public consultation on it. But I mean, underlining that again, from my perspective, I think it's been a great success. And I'll, I'll put myself on the line. I, I would fully support uh, a sort of permanent closure uh, of that uh, to, to vehicles. Uh, obviously having some sort of perhaps automated barrier or something for, for deliveries uh, during certain periods. Last question is just a technical one. Do you know what's happening with the old carpet right store? Any news on, because that seems to be undergoing quite a large uh, gutting. Um, any ideas what's happening up there? Yeah, I mean, my, <clears throat> my understanding is it's flats above and then it's ground floor retail. Um, yeah, that's, that's essentially it. So I'm not entirely sure how many flats or how many ground floor retail, but I'm sure there's some councillors that might have seen the... I hadn't seen the application, that's the no. only reason I asked, yeah. Okay. okay. Um, Tom, I've got, I've got a, a couple of questions. I mean, I'm very excited about, about Christmas, as always, and so that sounds brilliant, uh, the plans. Since we're in full advertising mode uh, for pubs in your, your ward, the Albert is a very fine pub and it's a finely named pub as well, let me, let me, let me say. But your actual questions, uh, uh, Tom, you mentioned obviously the, the ERDF money that Andrew Figgis is involved in. I know there's been various questions at, at, uh, when we've done the sort of surgeries and so on 
about signage around the around the town and uh, and so on. And I did wonder as to whether you thought that there may be a, a value in in seeking advice from Andrew as to whether we could claim any money there about improving signage in the in the town from that from that same from that same source. Just as a, yeah. a and I guess obviously similarly, there's clearly various uh, and obviously something for us perhaps um, us to take up with offices and within the, the cabinet, clearly money around around the various towns funds as to whether you think from any of your knowledge you've picked up from other bids and so on, whether there's a value in us thinking about whether it's Hitchin or in the district about making further bids to any of the, the government schemes that are around at the, at the moment. Sorry, was that directed at me? Yes, it was. Yes, it was. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. I think that's a great idea. And um, the the shame about the high, opening high street safely fund is a lot of high streets have already opened safely after that, for about three months, but there is no way of retrospectively um, applying for any funding. So the things that we have put out in the town and the measures we put in place are there, and now we're looking at ways that we can access funding for things in the future. Um, I think it would be really good if if the bids got together with the appropriate officers and councillors to look at other funding streams that we could work with the council on. I think there's a lot of merit in working collectively as as a as a um, as a district because a lot of bids, you know, we have we have very similar elements of our business plan, and at the moment we're all got very very similar um, objectives, which is. You know, trying to keep the town safe and um, you know running um, shop safe campaigns and things like that. So it's um, it's definitely merit in it, definitely. Yeah. Well, something. I mean, perhaps um, I'm looking to obviously particularly Keith and perhaps sort of Martin Steers Hanscom here that we could probably pick up sort of separately as a as as an issue. And uh, yeah, I think nods from nods from, uh, from from both. Right. Any other any other questions for for, for Tom before? Uh, we finish this, this agenda item. If not, thanks so much, Tom. Again, okay. obviously, thanks thanks to you for obviously and all the team for all the the work uh, that you're doing. Looking forward to the the Christmas arrangements, and obviously we'll have we'll, we'll have a further update at our uh, our next our next meeting. But thank thanks for that, and obviously have a good rest of the evening. Thank you, Tom. Great. Thank you very much. Yeah, brilliant. Okay. Uh, thanks. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Tom, for uh, for that, which then takes us through to the public participation uh, items. We've got two two items in respect of uh, of grants, um, and I think we've got Lisa King here, and I think you're um, sort of double heading, double handling, um, uh, both of them. Um, I don't know whether you want to deal with them jointly, or you'd just like to start off with Hitchin Fun Club first and sort of speak about that specific one, and then we can ask any questions and then do the um, Strathmore Fun Club. Up, up, up to you, I don't mind either way, whatever's, whatever's easiest for you. Sure, okay, well, I'll just give you a, um, a brief overview on both to start with, and then I'll look at them individually if that works okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sure, that sounds great. Okay, so first of all, I'll just introduce myself. My name's Lisa King, and I am indeed treasurer for both Hitchin and Strathmore Fun Clubs, which are both based in Hitchin. Um, I'm just getting over a cold, so my voice is a bit shaky this evening, so bear with me. Um, just as an overview then, Hitchin Fun Club is an after-school childcare facility based at Highbury School in Hitchin, and they also operate a holiday club, um, providing daycare during all the school holidays. They have child places um, of approximately 32 available each day and the majority of their children at the moment are coming in from Highbury School itself. Strathmore Fun Club runs an after-school club only and is based within Strathmore School. Um, they have approximately 40 child places each day and they normally take children in from Strathmore School, Samuel Lucas, Our Ladies and also Wilshire Dacre. Uh, both clubs have been established within Hitchin for over 20 years now and have um, excellent staff who are well-trained, loved by the children and have been with the club for many years. The clubs provide a safe, caring environment for children to play, explore, 
learn and engage in many different activities. And the clubs are run for ages four to 12 years and activities are suitable for all age ranges and children's interests. Um, we are not for profit clubs. So basically run uh, purely for the benefit of the children. And um, in doing that, fees can be kept low to make the club accessible for all working parents. Um, there's many, many clubs, um, after school clubs within Hitchin now, most of them are private. Um, so we, you know, we're a point of difference there. Um, I'll just briefly touch on obviously um, how COVID-19 has affected us. Um, it's been obviously the most challenging year um, that the clubs have ever had to face. We could never have predicted that we would have been forced to close due to a lockdown. And um, we needed during that time, unfortunately, to furlough the majority of our staff for several months. Um, it was only myself and uh, an office manager at Hitchin Fun Club that um, managed to, to work throughout. Um, we had to repay fees um, to parents who had already booked up for the Easter Holiday Club at Hitchin Fun Club. And we received no income at all, obviously, through fees from April through to September for Strathmore Fun Club um, and April through to July for Hitchin Fun Club. We were desperate to retain our loyal and hardworking staff. So a um, decision was made early on to top up the furlough scheme and we were able to pay our staff their full wage each month. Um, we were very lucky to have um, years ago a fund put in place um, for emergencies in a savings account which we were able to to access for this uh, which obviously was you know an emergency. Um, we were given a lifeline through um, the council, which we were extremely grateful for. We were able to obtain a discretionary fund for both of the clubs. And um, we applied for that on the basis of loss of income, which obviously we, you know, huge loss of income. And that enabled us to repay some of that uh, monies that were used from the savings, which was fantastic. Otherwise, I'm really not sure what would have happened to, to both of the clubs, to be honest. Um, Hitchin Fun Club were managed, um, did manage to run its holiday club over the summer for five weeks, albeit with fewer numbers um, and keeping the children in bubbles, um, strictly following the government guidelines. It was obviously hard work for all the staff, um, but all the families and children attending were very understanding and um, adhered to the new measures that were put in place, which was great. Unfortunately, Strathmore Fun Club, who were hoping to set up their own holiday club this year, um, had to put that on hold. And um, they've decided due to the current circumstances that they'll put those holiday club plans on hold for now. Uh, we'll see what happens in the future with that. So where we are now, um, as of the start of September term, in line with the schools reopening, we were able to reopen the after school clubs at both Highbury and Strathmore schools um, following strict government guidelines and um, both management and staff were thrilled to, to get back to work and to be with the children again. Child places are down on normal. Some parents are still working from home. However, the daily numbers are still good and we are hopeful that it will stay that way, fingers crossed. So what we are looking for, I'll start with Hitchin Fun Club. Um, we've applied for £900 on this grant and um, we would like to um, purchase some additional equipment required to cover the cost of programmes of events and activities for the year. Um, we have a full a uh, range of activities designed to um, keep the children engaged, fit and healthy and happy whilst attending the after school and holiday clubs at um, Hitchin Fun Club. They would have usually arranged a series of trips and visits, but obviously they've had to be cancelled this year due to COVID-19. So really they're looking for some extra equipment to be purchased 
um, mainly outside equipment because obviously at the moment they're desperate to get the kids outside um, as often as possible, um, which um, they're looking for things like scooters, hard helmets, um, traffic material. They'd like to set up a kind of a um, parkour type obstacle course within the grounds there um, to show the children how to um, behave um, in a road situation. Um, they'd also like some new sports equipment, um, including a trampoline, um, lots of footballs and some mats. And then um, other equipment would be basically um, just to top up on things that they use all the time, arts and craft materials, um, party supplies and games. Um, two larger items on their wish list for this year are a small kiln, which they've been looking at for some creative uh, clay play. And also they'd love a projector screen and a video projector, which they're hoping could be used for dance lessons and fitness sessions and things like that. Um, try, really trying to focus in on, on keeping the, the children fit and healthy and um, really look after their well-being at this time, which you know both clubs feel is crucial. So moving on to Strathmore Fun Club, um, similarly have applied for a thousand pound um, and that's to update their sports and outdoor equipment mainly. Um, they've asked for funding to help them cover um, the cost of new outdoor and sports equipment. Their equipment currently is very old and worn. Um, the funding would be used to um, purchase um, such equipment as um, water and splash play toys, outdoor toys such as scooters, road signs, hoops, skipping ropes, and um, lots of sports equipment, bats, balls, bean bags, nets, etc. Again, helmets and safety equipment. Um, and Strathmore equally believe that trying to keep the children outside every day, weather permitting, particularly important in these times looking after their health and well-being. And Strathmore uh, Fun Club run a programme of outdoor sporting events and games during the week, and they're always really well received by the children. Um, there is also for both clubs, obviously at the moment, um, additional costs that are having to be met for all of the cleaning materials, hygiene materials, which although they would have purchased previously, um, you know, there, there's so much more they're having to, to buy at the moment. So um, I've included that on both of the applications just because it is costing a lot more for us at the moment on those. Um, so that's it for the, for the pitch basically. Um, just wanted to thank you all for um, taking time to consider our request and for your ongoing support. Um, it's very much appreciated. And um, if you've got any questions, um, please go ahead. Yeah, thank you very much, Lisa, for that comprehensive presentation. I've got, at least a couple of questions to start with. Um, Simon Harwood and then Judy Billing. Simon. I'm sorry, Chair, I should have declared it at the start. I don't believe it's a declarable interest, but I, I will mention it uh, as we are uh, potentially going to grant application. My children have benefited uh, enormously over the years from uh, participation in Hitching Fun Club. Um, so I just did want to declare that uh, they're no longer there, no longer benefiting from it, but they have in the past, Chair. I don't believe it's a declarable interest. No, no I, I don't think so either. Um, thanks, thanks. Uh, um, Judy? Thank you. Um, I wasn't going to declare, but I will now. Um, uh, having had uh, many grandchildren uh, benefit, particularly from the Strathmore Fun Club um, over the years. Um, again, or they may still be, but it's still not a disclosable um, interest. Uh, what I was going to say was what members of this committee often hear me say, which is to wonder whether um, Strathmore Fun Club and, and, and the Fun Club have also applied um, for funding to the two county councillors who cover the areas um, that, that, that they're based in. Um, we have contributed in the past and were given extra funding this year to cover shortfalls that were to do with the pandemic. Um, and um, since you're covered by Hitchin South and Hitchin North, 
um, it might be worth also um, that the county councils don't have huge sums of money, but um, could also certainly help with some of the items on the lists that you read out. And I, I, I don't want to take away from your application to this committee, and I very much hope it goes through. Um, I'm just saying there's a bit of extra there, um, if that would be helpful. Thank on a cross-party basis, because one of the county councillors is a Conservative and one is Labour, so I'm not making a political point there, just to be absolutely yeah. clear. Um, and one of them's you. Uh, just one of them's yeah. Sorry. I knew that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but... The, that's, that's fine. Well, Lisa, you might want to have a, you know, have a think about that after the, the meeting and obviously talk to uh, either Judy or, or, or Derek Ashley, the other, the other, the other county councillor. I'm sure they'll be only too pleased to, to, uh, to hear from you. Um, Certainly. Any, thank you. Yeah. No, any, any other questions to, um, uh, to Lisa from councillors? If not, that, that's great. Well, what I was intending to do now was that if we can move to the consideration of the of the two grant requests, you can find those on pages seven and eight of your um, agenda. Um, Katie, did you want to introduce the the um, the item from um, from your perspective, from the community engagement perspective? Excuse me, Chair. Can I just come in there? Yeah, uh, we've got a uh, Galaxy Tab H trying to join the meeting. I've got a feeling that we can, uh, might be Councillor Claire Billing trying to come back in. Uh, uh, you, your permission, I'll let her back in. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, please do. Yeah. That'd be great. Thank you. Yeah, she declared it. Claire dis oh, yeah. yeah. Hello, Claire. Welcome back. We just need to change your name or someone needs to change your, change your, change your name. Now, Jeff. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's that's great. Um, Katie, did you want to um, say anything further in relation to the two the two two requests here from your report? Um, no, I think um, I think that Lisa's outlined all the information that we need. Um, but I can run you through financial implications at this stage if you wanted me to. Yeah, yeah if you just want to, if you want to do that, that would be helpful. Yeah, application. Um, yeah, no problem. Um, so, uh, this far, uh, Hitching Committee has provided uh, £4,565 in grant funding uh, from the 2020 and 21 budget. Um, this leaves uh, £6,435 to utilise for the remainder of the year. So, the grant funding applied for in this round uh, across both Hitching Fund Club and Strathmore Fund Club um, adds up to 1,900. Um, and so if councillors are minded to agree these grants, there would be £4,535 remaining from Hitching Committee budget. Thanks. Yep, thank you, Katie. Um, I'm open to debate. I've got a hand from Simon Harwood. Sorry, just to check, just looking at the paperwork, Katie. Um, I saw a previous grant was made in 20, I would say I'm very supportive of this, very, very supportive, but a previous grant was made in 2019. Just want to check we are within the rules. Yeah, absolutely. So um, the new uh, grant criteria, which was uh, pushed through uh, in January 2020, um, removes those restrictions. So absolutely, um, under the new restrictions, uh, the fun clubs are, are both eligible again. Great news. Th thank you very much. Yep. It's a, it's a very good new policy under the uh, joint administration, I have to say, uh, whoever, whichever put it through. Um, any, uh, Councillor Steers Hanscom, Martin. Yes, that, thank you, Chair. Um, I, I was just going to move, I think, uh, very worthwhile um, proposals. I wanted to move the, uh, I don't know whether you want me to move both together. I'm quite happy yeah. to, or yeah, I'll, I'll move the great. first one. But uh, I'd move that we uh, give the grant uh, as recommended. Lovely. Uh, I'm happy to second, Chair. Yeah. yeah, thank you. Thank you, uh, Paul Clark. I put my hand up properly. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, you did. You I'll go back properly. to Spain. Sorry, I'll go back to Spain. I'm a <laughs> naughty girl. Uh, Paul. Um, so, Paul. as I say, I, I, I second the more Judy seconds of always. Yeah. Second we one each. 
we will, we will, we will put you down a seconding on the basis of your appropriate intervention. <laughs> yeah, I know it makes a change before Judy says it. <laughs> uh, but we'll note that Councillor Billings' enthusiastic support. Um, right, okay, so if we could just move, if we can move to the vote then, if colleagues could just press the, um, the yes buttons and no buttons, and I'll get William just to make sure at the, to add up the votes for me, to make sure that's... Looks, I believe that vote carries. Yep, that is it. Yep, that's that's great. And and obviously just to note that Claire Claire Council of Claire Billing didn't didn't vote. So I should have said that before. Obviously the basis that she don't unfortunately had to drop out. Uh, the IT dropped along the along the way. Right. Well, thank you very much, Lisa. You've put, you heard the councillors have awarded those those two 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 grants. Thanks for all the work that you're doing. And obviously do do have a think about whether you're approaching the county councillors. After after the meeting, but certainly thanks for yeah thanks for coming this evening. Much Thank you very much. Thank you. Lovely. That's great. Which which then takes us on to um, the next public participation, which is from uh, Tony Williams from the uh, North Arts African Caribbean community. I heard a heard Tony give an excellent presentation at the community support fund meeting last week, and uh, and I was particularly wanted. Um, uh, to see if Tony could come come along this evening. So thank you for thank you for for making the time for the committee, uh, uh, Tony. We'd really like to hear from you from the work um, that your new group is doing, and also some of the things that you've been doing in relation, despite the pandemic, to Black History Month and so on. That's uh, that's coming up. But obviously, open to you to make a short short presentation to councillors, and as before, obviously open to questions afterwards. So Tony, welcome. And over to you. Uh, thank you for having me. Um, first of all, um, Mr. Councillor Hewson, I've been to the Korean place. The dumplings are amazing. <laughs> <laughs> <You love that>. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yes, so uh, thank you for having us. We are a new group, as mentioned. Um, it started after everything that happened around George Floyd and the Black Lives Matter movement. Um, we formed a group because we wanted, initially, it was just initially to look at uh, Black History Month to start with um, and see what we could organise in events around. First of all, it was going to be Hitchin, then it progressed to Letchworth, and now we're potentially looking at the whole of North Hearts. Um, so it's grown quite rapidly <laughs> since we started it a few months ago. Um, but it's now also um, become more than Black History Month. Um, it's now looking at a wider and longer term uh, prospects of, of community engagement, bringing together lots of community groups that are around uh, North Hearts, uh, especially in Hitchin and Letchworth, um, and trying to bring some cohesion to that and drive forward with equality um, and cultural understanding um, across everyone. Um, so to start with Black History Month stuff, uh, what we're looking to organise and what we've been doing is putting together a, a list of events that were going to be in October, but like I said, due to the pandemic, uh, we've had to put on hold. Um, so those events included uh, cinema nights um, that were going to be held um, at different locations across Hitchin um, and Letchworth, which now be across uh, the various cinemas across North Arts. Um, creative writing workshops with an emphasis on mental health. Um, those are still happening in October. Uh, we've moved those online. They're in conjunction with a wonderful charity called Poets In. Uh, they've been delivering uh, creative writing for mental health uh, to communities uh, and different people in the community for, for about a couple of years now. Um, so they're very, good, they're very glad to have them on board. Um, Following the creative writing events, it was going to be a showcase for spoken word artists. So some of those people that attend the creative writing uh, will be able to showcase some of the writing they've come up with in that day. And we're going to get some speakers um, to come and present as well. Um, we've managed to keep some of those speakers for the online forum. So we've got uh, Mr. Um, Stuart Lawrence, uh, the brother of uh, the murder of Stephen Lawrence, he's going to be attending. We've got some uh, rappers, we've got some MCs to try and appeal to the younger audience uh, in, in, the, in the local area. Um, so the showcase will still be happening as a live event again, once we can hold it safely. Um, 
an exhibition was going to be held at North Hearts Museum, uh, looking at uh, black history in general. Um, it was going to be called something like Out of Africa. So looking at the influences of black people on the community, things that they've done, and looking at some of the, of the amazing pictures taken by Cassie Paris uh, from the Black Lives Matter process we had in Hitchin. Um, we've also got, uh, been donated uh, by a friend of mine who um, happens is, uh, uh, happened to have a original title, mortgage title deed of slaves from Grenada for uh, 200 years old. So that it was going to be donated to the Slave Museum in Liverpool, um, but North Hearts Museum are uh, going to have that first of all. So that is being displayed live from Thursday um, for the month of October, and then hopefully again in the month when we can put on our event. So that's something that's pretty amazing to bring the reality of slavery to, to real life right in front of you. Um, we're also looking at a Black Britain's Trail through Hitchin Town Centre. Um, that was in association with uh, the bid team, so uh, with Tom. Um, again, we've put it on hold because while we could physically still do that, um, it was thought, we thought it'd be better to, you know, shops are going to be busy enough. We're trying to get people in and keeping people social distance enough without people hanging around outside windows, reading the information that we've got on there. So from a public safety point of view and keep the town moving and busy, um, we decided to again scale that back and do that when it's safe to do so and um, there was uh, less restrictions in place um black hair workshops so teaching people like councillor collins how to look after his hair <laughs> sorry sam uh, <laughs> but <laughs> but you know there's, there's you know it's with an emphasis on mixed race hair so there's a lot of mixed race families in and around north hertfordshire my family being one of them um and it can be sometimes a bit of a learn and uh, a, a try and see kind of situation when you're you're new to dealing with afro hair on how to manage it what conditions it needs to be in or how to grease it how to plait it how to braid it all those sorts of things um so we're going to be um putting that online for the month of october there'll be a workshop on dealing uh, on how to manage the uh, afro hair and mixed race hair um, and eventually as well at some point as well we're going to try and do one for dads specifically so teach dads how to braid and look after their daughter's hair um, because we all need to be more involved in doing things like that instead of going come here Lord. so uh, <laughs> um, i know there's a lot of interest in that already so um, it's something we've, we've i've discussed with people before so that will be coming online as well um, and then association uh, in association with uh, the young black futures project we're going to be doing a Dragon's Den style business mentoring um, event, which will take young people from the area who've got uh, ideas and much like Dragon's Den, set without all the money, um, we'll be getting people to come give us their ideas and then help mentor them to write those business plans, where to get funding, you know, give them advice and guidance from people who are like them, who know their backgrounds potentially um, on, on how to do it and getting themselves into business. And that's an ongoing project that we'll be launching at the end of October um, through uh, a separate organization, but we're quite happy to support and, uh, and, and push them as well. Um, and then the end of it was going to be a gala dinner, um, which would have been raising money for local charities um, to try and support some of the local community. So that's what we had planned. Outside of that and the longer term future, um, the eventual long term, what we'd uh, aim is um, to get uh, to have a safe space for Black and Caribbean, African, African and Caribbean people in the community, uh, community centre of sorts, for holding events like this regularly. So, you know, where they can be day centres, where they can be uh, mental health workshops, where they can be community events and, and, and social things. Obviously, the hit we are, we are, um, there are lots of facilities in Hitchin already. Um, but one that's specifically aimed at that community uh, with their interests at the heart of it is going to be important looking at the spiritual, cultural and psychological needs of that community. So that's where we're at, that's where we're aiming to go and uh, hopefully that will be supported by the local councils. Uh, I'd like to say thank you to Councillor Collins who's been very supportive and helping, helpful on uh, getting us to this point. And Councillor Billing, who's uh, been giving us some advice, as well as Councillor Hoskins. So thank you very much for that. And of course, the wonderful community engagement team, Katie and Lee, they've been amazing. So thank you very much. Thank you. Well, I'm certainly happy to endorse all of those those, those, <laughs> those thanks. And thank you, Tony, for all of the 
of the work that you know you and your 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 team are, are doing. I'm going to op open it up to a question. Can I can I do, do two things? One, one uh, Katie, I don't know whether uh, obviously colleagues may or may not have looked. Do you do you want to put the um, the their website up maybe in the in the chat in the chat box? Is we that the problem? Our website isn't live yet, so it's being. Is built. it not live yet? Right, yeah, so will be that will be live by the middle of October. Okay, uh, that's that's cool. It, what's the best place to sort of get the, the for people after this to go and look at what events that you're planning, you know, so, the, as a program? So as a so it's quite um. We're on Facebook at the moment and Twitter as North okay. Arts Diversity and Culture or Lecture of Diversity and Culture. And the way we're planning to work it because, so the Diversity and Culture Group is going to be the umbrella that sits on top of the smaller organisations. So the plan is to have a community group for different communities within yep. culture. So the Asian community, the Italian community, the Polish community will all sit under that umbrella and will work to a wider, because it's not just about us, there's uh, lots of communities out there that need help and support and we want to be able to work with all of them. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, so, North Arts Diversity and Culture, Hitchin Diversity and Culture, Lecture of Diversity and Culture. Fantastic. But that, the, 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 tell you the question I wanted to ask, and I, and, and I meant to ask you the, the, other, the other day was, um, we obviously already have quite a strong partnership with North Arts Minority Ethnic Forum how are you sort of working with them as a because clearly obviously they come obviously doing some of the sorts of things that you're doing and covering different communities and so on are you working closely with them um, with with them and in, in terms of some of the, some of this we haven't so far so i did have spoken to Mohammed at the north arts minority and ethic forum yeah. um, and before we'd actually managed to incorporate ourselves and get an accounts and get everything set up as a yeah. as a community group he was going to apply for the money for us so we we're very grateful to him for that. Um, we've kind of wanted to do it on our own a little bit. Um, there are some grumblings within uh, some communities about how the Minority Ethic, Ethic Forum has been in the past. Um, so ideally, we'd like to work with them in the future to move forward to you know, overcome those grumblings. Um, but at the moment, yeah, we just very much wanted to go on our own and uh, as much as we can and then, then go work with them to try and bring them up to where we where we'd like to see them in the community well that's that's great and i, I know that um the community engagement team and i'm sure um judy billing and her in terms of her sort of portfolio will be obviously happy to kind of obviously you know do that help you with the workings with the minority ethnic forum we've obviously value their partnership and obviously we value you working with them and as part of this really brilliant diverse community we have you know in uh, in hitchin and across across north North Hearts. Oh, let me open it up now to questions. I've got uh, Keith Hoskins as, as hand. Keith. Okay, thank you. Hi, Tony. Um, Hi. The uh, trail around the town, I may have missed this. You may have said it and it went over my head. Sure. Um, I know you said you're not doing it now, mm -hmm. but presumably if you've got information boards, is there a way that um, we can get Tom to replace the information boards that we've currently got up in Kenmore, for example, the old Kenmore shop, on the corner of Hermitage Road, sure. and for your month, put your information boards in there. That potentially could work. So we were actually working uh, in, in conjunction with Christchurch um, to do this. So it was looking at um, the 100 Black Britons project that's um, public available online and trying to bring that into the forefront a little bit more. Um, so yes, there are some posters and um, boards of information already done. Um, a lot of them are outside Christchurch already. Um, so we're, gonna, we're just going to expand on that and look at the wider picture because there's quite okay. a lot of sports and movie stars and things like that on there. We want to look at things outside of that as well. Um, so yes, I could speak to... Um, yeah, I think so. Eddie It'd be quite nice to have the town centre presence. That's all I'm mm. thinking. Oh yeah, definitely. That's brilliant, an, thank that's you. That's an excellent, excellent suggestion. Yeah, that's, that's brilliant. Um, any other kind of questions from, uh, from councillors? If not, I think that's probably covers them. Well, look, um, Tony, thank you very much for, for, for coming along this evening. It really is a, a, appreciated. We're, we're really, this committee, I know, will be very pleased to hear from you again, to work closely with you in the coming months, particularly hopefully when we can get to you, be able to, uh, to, provide, to help to support you in your sort of wider work. And we're very happy to, 
publicize the things that you're that you're doing and the events that you are that you are able to run next month and uh, and hopefully in in coming months that wider program that you uh, that you talked about so yeah ab absolutely look forward to hearing from you again and do do uh, do come do come back um, when you've got any some further information and further things so uh, very thank you. happy thank to you very much. Uh, yeah thank you tony thank you much appreciated thank you. Bye -bye. and and really obviously to say to tony and lisa you're very welcome to uh, to stay but obviously we're going on to the rest of the committee or you might choose to escape to other things. but yeah but, and thank you both for your time this evening really is appreciated okay. right um so with with that um if um if we can then sort of turn to the remainder of your um, your report, um, Katie, that's uh, in front of the committee. If just you want to run through, there's any sort of specific items you'd like to bring bring to the committee's attention. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, thank you, Chair. Um, I did send a roundup as I usually do to councillors ahead of uh, this evening. So I'd just like to highlight um, certain things. Um, so that I don't take up too much of your time. Um, but I do have sort of four things to run you through this evening, um, which I'd like to draw your attention to. Um, the first of which is a Hitchin special town talk, which Ian mentioned uh, um, at, at the earlier town talk. Um, this is due to take place on Monday, the 19th of October um, from uh, 9 uh, but from 7 p.m. sorry to 8:30 p.m. and that will be via Zoom. Um, again, the topic, as uh, Ian mentioned earlier, um, is focusing on how arts providers can recover from the pandemic, um, and the aim of that really is to facilitate some sort of arts cooperative. Um, so really, um, us acting as a as a facilitator and um, those groups taking on ownership of of that and uh, speaking amongst themselves. Um, so invites have uh, gone out um, and certainly we've had a lot of interest already uh, from those who we've invited to speak um, and then additional organisations will be invited to attend um, and um, observe but, but not necessarily present because otherwise it'd be a very long evening um, and obviously it will be open to the public as well so that will um, we, we will design the poster for that shortly and we'll start promoting that sh very shortly as well. Um, I'll, I'll do questions overall at the end, so I'll just move yeah. on to the next next item. That's fine, yep. Um, so also coming up, we have uh, youth democracy events in line with UK Parliament Week. Um, that is from uh, week commencing 2nd of November. Um, and so here at NHDC, uh, we're hosting activities for young people um, in school years 9, 10 and 11. Um, and we will be hosting events on the 2nd, 3rd and 4th of November. Um, just to note, that if you want more information on that, um, you can contact um, Democratic Services um, and I believe Mel Stimpson's heading up um, that, but um, also Lee Ellis in my team. Um, we'll be able to uh, give you some more information on that. Um, if anyone did want the timetable of the events, um, please just ping me an email and I can send that over to you. Um, in terms of the next thing uh, that I have to talk to you about is Holocaust Memorial Day uh, 2021. Um, bless you, Liz. <laughs> Holocaust Memorial Day 2021, um, I'm sort of helping to organise again this year alongside Lee. Um, that is due to take place on Wednesday, the 27th of January. Um, and the theme for uh, this year is Be the Light in the Darkness, which I think is very uh, prevalent to the current times, both with COVID and also um, the Black Lives Matter movement as well. So um, we had a conversation with the rabbi today to go through initial planning for that. Um, and again, uh, Rabbi Alan Garber from um, Shenley United Syn Synagogue will be leading on that. Um, so we are planning a virtual service, um, but obviously 
uh, COVID regulations permitting, we might have a, a dual approach where there's there's a small scale live service taking place, which is also being being streamed virtually. Um, just a few more points on that. Um, alongside the service itself, we're hoping to do a poster competition for um, primary school age children and secondary school age children will be asking them to write a short piece. So sort of some competitions um, alongside that and those um, the winners of those competitions will feature in a digital order of service which we plan to put together. Um, so that's a brief overview of Holocaust Memorial Day. And then last of all, um, Ian Albert asked if I could do sort of a roundup of where we're currently at with our coronavirus uh, community support fund. Um, obviously, it's been hugely successful since launching um, and uh, we've been really pleased to be able to support lots of um, needy organisations within the district who are doing fantastic work, but obviously have been massively impacted by a lack of funds. Um, so um, Councillor Ian Albert has outlined that there's a rough budget of around £150,000 um, that's been allocated to the Community Support Fund. Um, so far, um, by Claire Morgan's calculations, um, which haven't been officially um, signed off. So she just wanted me to state this. Um, but by Claire's calculations, uh, this far, we have utilised 73,700 of the budget. Um, there are £4,000 worth of pending grants, uh, which were presented to the panel on the 23rd of September. Um, and therefore, if these grants are signed off, uh, the total expenditure to date would be 77,700. Um, so we're still well within budget on that. Um, and just to note that um, organisations specific to Hitchin have received funding um, from that source so far are um, Tile House Counselling, Phase, uh, Built on Faith Church, which is doing food provision on West Mill. Um, and also the Hitch and Food Provision team um, as well. And I'm sure there'll be many more to come. So yeah, that's, um, that's my roundups and uh, happy to answer any questions if anyone has any. Thank you. Good, thanks, thanks, Katie. Thanks for all the, the work, that's, that sounds brilliant. Um, Paul Clark. Can I just clarify the time of the town talk? Because I said seven thirty. I misled early. you. <laughs> and you I misled you, you miserably, as I often do. <laughs> you, you really need to get it from someone who knows what they're talking about, and not I someone. Think, I think we'll go with my time of seven o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> Just to prove I listen. Sometimes. Yes, absolutely. And, and yeah, it's and, seven so, till till eight thirty. Yeah. Yeah. Thank, thanks, thanks, Paul, for uh, pointing up my error. <laughs> it is appreciated. Yeah, Simon. Uh, Chair, I'm happy to take it under AOB, but I wonder if it's appropriate now, uh, as uh, you know, and as Councillor Clark knows, and as I mentioned in the town talk, uh, there is um, a request for funding around um, using Section 106 money to replace vandalised um, picnic benches on King George V. Uh, which may need additional support from across Hitchin. And I wondered whether that was appropriate now under the community engagement piece or whether we should take something under AOB. I, I'm, I mean, I'm happy to, to, to pick it up now. It's not a, that's not a problem to, uh, to I was, you know, what's going to make sure it was covered under members' reports in the, in the next item. I'm happy um, wherever you want to take it, Jim. Yeah, no, do you, do you want to, why don't you sort of explain what the issue is, is now, Simon? Yes, as I reported in the town talk, but officially in this meeting, yeah, sadly, there's been over the lockdown period uh, an increased amount of vandalism on, on King George V. And I would say, obviously, it's not my ward, uh, but obviously, along with yourself, Chair and Councillor Clark, obviously, I sit on the, the Council's King George V uh, playing field uh, committee. And uh, obviously, has been reported to us uh, enhanced amount of vandalism that's been sadly particularly focused around the, the, the picnic benches. Uh, the wooden picnic benches, which uh, I'm sure lots of people use when they're enjoying the fields. Um, and obviously they've been completely destroyed. Uh, what the uh, rugby club, Hitchin Rugby Club, who uh, look after the playing fields on behalf of the council, 
have proposed is replacement of those benches with a more substantial bench. I understand some sort of concrete picnic benches that, that, that uh, are much more difficult, obviously, to vandalise. Uh, and uh, they've been in discussion with the Section 106 officer, and there is a, a small amount of Section 106 funding, uh, but there obviously is a gap in between the amount of Section 106 funding and the total request for the replacement of the benches. So obviously between myself, uh, you and, and Councillor Clark, obviously, and, and, and for the interest of this committee, we'd uh, just simply ask the question, was there some way in which we could find the additional, I think, 2,000-ish pounds, uh, which was the Delta, uh, 3,000, thank you, Councillor Clark, uh, Delta in between the Section 106 and the required funding uh, to replace those. Thank you, Chair. Chip, um, thanks for that. Um, I mean, I guess from my point of view, I did, I, has there been a discussion with the um, estate sort of team, the, with the, you know, Andrew Mills, Tom Ayers, in relation to uh, to this as yet? A brief question, a, a brief conversation, Chair, but it always comes back to where is, where's the money coming from? <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's very true. That's very true. I, I mean, I really hope, I mean, I'm obviously happy to sort of take take this one away for those further discussions, but I don't know whether either colleagues or, um, I mean, obviously, Katie, you're open to have a few, but it's probably a bit unfair asking you the question, but um, but obviously open to uh, suggestions. I mean, I guess, if I may, Chair, I guess the main question for this committee at the minute is, is, is would this committee support the Section 106 funding allocation? Yeah. That's which I think this committee would need to approve, and then yeah. maybe we can take where on earth does the rest of the money come from? Yeah. But in principle, does this committee provisionally approve the spend of the one or six money on those benches in that in that ward? Yeah, I'll take that. I'll come back to that proposal. Yeah, that's fine. Um, Judy Billy. Thank you, Chair. This comes a bit of a surprise to me because I can distinctly remember sitting at one of those picnic tables. Not many weeks ago so has this happened quite recently I, I, I don't know um, but it's quite difficult given the processes that we all go through over these emergencies and these um, funding issues to, to suddenly have it chucked at us um, at quarter to nine on, on, on an evening because I didn't know anything about it at all now I'm absolutely certain we will find a way of dealing with this issue but I'm not sure we can do that on the hoof um, round, a round uh, our own tables um, in the middle of a committee meeting. So I just wonder whether Simon would be happy to put it on the table and let us take it away and sort it out. Uh, uh, I, I don't think we can do it by committee. No, if I may respond, Chair? Yeah, go on, Simon. Uh, that's absolutely fair, uh, Judy. Um, absolutely fair. It was. It was just obviously... It, it had only happened in the past few weeks... And obviously, we don't have the committee meetings too regularly. And if we needed to call and we had several months till the next one. Uh, but I absolutely, completely understand you, your point of view, and, and we will take it offline. Thank you. Okay. And c c can we um, give chair and vice chair some delegated authority to continue these discussions, please, um, and come to a solution? I mean, we, nobody wants it to wait till March, yeah. for goodness' sake. No. Uh if a, a committee are happy to to agree that we take take, take that away, yeah, there looks lots of thumbs up. That sounds fine. But obviously, we will re report back to you, and and we'll obviously also just circulate around just to make sure once we've got to the point of knowing a bit more that we get, get your agreement around the the section one hundred and six money that we could do that. We could do that via via email. But no, that's absolute. That's absolutely fine. Um. Any other questions for Katie? If not, thank you very much. That's 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 thanks for that, Katie. Um, which takes us to ward and an outside organisation members' reports. Could could I get perhaps William just to cover briefly the the remembrance uh, parade service and and so on first of all before I come on to the some of the other things? Yeah, of course. And. Um Thank you, Councillor. It'll be a very brief update because the information I have at the moment is quite limited. Um, just to give a bit of background, I've been sent on what I would call a fact-finding mission to work out what events, if any, uh, will be happening across North Hertfordshire to mark Remembrance Day. Um, obviously, in light of all of the uh, 
pandemic regulations, a lot of what has happened in previous years won't be going on. Um, we're in a situation where it appears that Hitchin may well be the only town that has a uh, significant event, um, but it will not resemble anything that has happened in previous years. I've spoken to the Royal British Legion representative, who um, in fact doesn't run the event in Hitchin anymore, who passed me over to the Sea Cadet leader, who told me that there will be no parade, uh, as has previously happened, but that the Reverend of St Mary's Church, uh, Mr Christopher Bounce, will be hopefully hosting a short act of remembrance at 11am at the War Memorial on Sunday the 8th. He is hoping potentially to have a choir to sing the national anthem, um, and I am trying to work out whether or not it's possible to have a representative uh, from North Hertfordshire District Council to... Uh, fulfill our sort of civic engagement requirements. Um, otherwise, that's pretty much everything I know at the moment. I'm happy thanks. to take questions, but... Yeah, no, thanks for it. And I mean, I think the one thing additionally that I'd, I'd suggested around um, to um, the, the vicar was, was potentially, obviously, if there is some form of uh, wreath laying uh, mm -hmm. going on, um, that that we could look to potentially stream the, the service, um, mm -hmm. sort of made a maybe an initial approach to sort of hitching TV, but we can look to see whether that might be streamable. We're obviously conscious that if there aren't events going on and if people know there's something happening in Hitchin, obviously we want to try and avoid, avoid, I know it's difficult to avoid too big a, a number and so on. So whether, you know, streaming might be a, an additional sort of possibility possibility but we're just having a look at look at that one um mm -hmm. the yeah no keith yeah yeah thanks ian uh, i have suggested to chris bunce that in actual fact he um if he wants to have some more meaningful uh, service he could do it socially distanced on the on the riverbank side of the church and then just process the the wreaths up to the uh, war memorial because the War Memorial is a very constrained site, and you're quite right. If yeah. people just turn up for it, it's uh, it, it probably won't be very good. So if they they did the service on the riverbank side, mm. and then just walked them up. It would probably be better. Yeah, no, that's a fair 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 suggestion. We certainly, you know, we can certainly look at look into that, and obviously check whether Chris is able to look into uh, into that. No, it's good 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 point. Um, no, that's that's great. Um, any other questions in relation to that? If not, thanks, William. Um, I've got a few things just to sort of uh, uh, canter through, but I mean, I don't. I know Keith, you gave the um, sort of updates to to the um, town talk, but I don't know whether you, formally there's anything you want to say now. We're we're looking to have some written reports at the at the next meeting. Is there anything you want to formally say for this meeting in relation, say to around sort of Charmwood, the Dell, the River Walkway for uh, anything on, you want to cover on for this meeting on on those things? Yeah, I can I can just get you up to date on that. As far as the River Walkway is concerned, we're just um, getting together proposed terms of a lease uh, to enable us to put that last piece of the jigsaw uh, into the River Walkway. So um, that, that there's progress on that. We talked at length in town talk about charm with the old museum and the um, um, aspirations for that, I suppose, for it to be a community building and the way that that may have to dovetail in with what we do on um, a museum storage unit in Berry Mead Road because there's storage issues there. But there's progress. There are progress, albeit slowly, on, on all of these. The Dell, of course, the Dell we had hoped would be back in use this year for Hitchin Festival as a one-off and that got uh, put to one side, but that will be resurrected in time, but we will need to do, a, no doubt, a major fundraising project on that. I'm sure, actually, I'm sure the Dell is a topic that will come up in our arts and culture town yes. talk. Yeah, no, um, uh, any questions for, for, for Keith on, on those? ones 
Uh, if not, just maybe just to sort of canter through a few very sort of quick things. I mean, I think um, obviously had some had some sort of questions arise, and I, th uh, and so I think will be an article coming out in one of the North. Art, I think it's NH now publications about um, fair trade and Hitchin was one of the the first. I think it was Martin or probably say Hitchin was the first fair trade town in the county. I think that's I think that's right in in Hertfordshire. We were the first in Hertfordshire, that's correct. And Keith yeah. was part of the team as well when we and brought the, it. Yeah. And, what, and I thought it might be useful maybe to get um, was it Helen Richardson or someone to come along maybe to our next meeting just to talk about um, you know fair fair trade. Um, Paul, Paul Clark. Well, my ear keeps getting bent about Hitchy Museum and the fact that uh, Wall's Ice Cream <laughs> gets promoted <laughs> a lot more than uh, fair trade. End of yes. Thing. Now, Keith, Keith will give you a. I'm sure we'll give you a, <laughs> some. But I know there is now a fair trade poster on the. There is the, a fair trade sticker in the door, Paul. Yeah. No, it's yeah. not. But is there fair trade everything. ice cream in the shop? That's what he <laughs> wants to know. <laughs> you have you have fair trade products available as in as in all council venues because it was adopted as council policy. Uh, very long. In fact, it's a it's a condition of our fair trade status as a fair trade town that the local authority backs and stocks fair trade products in its premises. So, yeah, I really don't know what the issue is, Paul. Quite yeah. frankly, but, but we can we can certainly get um uh, you know so an up maybe do an update on on fair trade at the next at the next meeting. We're certainly looking to do a further um, update at our. So next meeting around, I mean, I'm going to go slightly into the next agenda item as well, uh, um, around sort of ch church gate. And I was hoping that we would have air quality on this agenda. We will pick that up for the next meeting. The report's not available um, yet. One of the things I have uh, did pick up in the last sort of the last week was around community centres. And I don't know whether, I mean, it's probably looking here at, um, obviously, Mike and Elizabeth, but I mean, obviously, other colleagues might want to come in about how the our community centres in the in in the town are, are doing, or maybe it's either Claire or or, or Martin in relation to West, to West Mill um, of how the community centres are, are doing. It's clearly a really important part of our community, but I know we're getting some reports around in other places about about the, the community centres really struggling because of lack of bookings and, and so on. I don't know whether anyone's got any any updates about about their local community centres in their in their wards. If obviously open to, to colleagues to come in on come in on, on that if there's any you want to up, update us. Mike? Yeah thanks Ian just quickly um yeah that, that certainly um Woolsworth Community Centre is struggling a little bit Obviously, bookings dropped off a cliff, um, but I think you know that that to a certain extent they can sort of live with that. What what is more difficult is the constant changes in regulations uh, and advice from central government, which which causes a lot of confusion. And they have to share it between all members and agree ways forward. And quite often that they're changing their procedures now. So I think you know it's it's not just the booking; it's it's the constant shifting in advice, which is causing a lot of concern at the moment. And you know, it you know pretty much changed every couple of weeks now, doesn't it? And every time that happens, they have to they're almost going back to a drawing board with okay, how if we get more bookings, how can we accommodate these? And you know, even what they're sending out to to the regular bookers, it, you know, changes every week according to the guidance. So so yeah, it's not a great situation to be honest. Yeah, thanks, Mike. Mark Martin. Yeah, with regard to West Mill, I'm, I I don't know personally what the situation is there. I picked it up early on. Um, but I, I don't know whether Katie knows from the West Mill group because the uh, uh, community centre manager is on that uh, that group. So I don't know if Katie can comment on how they're doing. But clearly, it's something we do need to pick up uh, where we don't have the information uh, and what the situation as as we were dealing with on the recovery board earlier today. Yeah. Katie, did you want to yes, um, yes. Yeah, so obviously we have had a number of emails into our community um, inbox about these um, these issues that the community centres are facing, um, and and each time we just refer them uh, to the to the same guidance, um, which is um, from Acre, um, and and they're sort of providing uh, updates, um, and so. Uh, 
I can I can forward that that detail that um advice to uh councillors if that if that would be helpful um just to keep keep uh, an eye on that um but in terms of West Mill Community Centre um I know that uh office staff were were back sort of um in the office and I know that they were welcoming some groups back in but obviously um now with the new numbers uh, it will be difficult for them to have have certain groups in um just to know that in West Mill um, Emma Connor centre manager is on um maternity leave so it's it's Nadine who's heading things up uh, there at the moment um but but as I say if we do if we do have any uh, questions uh, from community centres we are referring them to to that document so, cool. yeah. Thanks, Katie. Yeah, I mean, just to say we have similar issues as an authority, of course, with the Town Hall, which is our big community centre. Um, I think they've recently started back one or two of the fitness classes, which they're allowed to do. But anything else, comedy clubs, live events, I mean, they've yeah. just dropped, dropped out the floor. Yeah. Well, I mean, one of the things I said at the recovery board earlier on was they're happy to to see whether we could coordinate either meeting with individual or, or, or several sort of community centres, discuss how they're doing and see what we can do as a, a council to, uh, you know, support them and uh, happy to sort of take that, take that forward. But obviously if you do get any sort of further updates around, around that, that would be, you know, that would be uh, uh, helpful. Um, I was going to, uh, Judy, I don't know whether yeah whether you want to pick up the um, the update around the sort of sur the traffic surveys that are going on on around the twenty mile an hour zones that um, I think that's been agreed with the county council. Um, yeah, I, I'm happy to very briefly. It, it's um, a tortuous process as ever. Um, it took six years to get um, twenty five streets designated as twenty five mile an hour zones between 2011 and 2017. Um, felt very happy in April 2017 when it was all put in place. Uh, but there are places where it's working well and places where it's not working very well. Um, and it's been a tortuous process in um, combination with the County Council's um, new speed management strategy, uh, which is a bureaucratic load of stuff um to get any sorry i tried to put that as politely as i could <laughs> um to try and get some action um uh, around those streets that have been a bit of a nightmare beaton road is one of them which is almost three or four separate streets really in it in its own way um so yeah it's been agonizing and talk to us we have managed now to get the proper i think respect and attention from county highways officers um, who did agree that it was possible to meet with district councillors in a ward as well as the county councillor, um, although that was quite hard work as well. Um, but I think they got the message um, and are now being very helpful indeed, being very much helped by a very active local <clears throat> resident group, a petition, which got enough signatures to demand meetings with county officers and the county portfolio holder. And now a series of um, um, research tests has been proposed, which will be going ahead um, as soon as possible, I think. And they, 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 they do seem to be pushing it a bit now. We have an officer working with us who I think is being particularly helpful, who was the first council officer who I saw in person um, in the last nine months or so, when he actually had to come to my house to pick up the petition. And I think we were both quite shocked to see another human in, in real life rather than on Zoom. Um, this is Paul Patmore at the County Council. And it seems to have cemented a, um, a sense of cooperation which will take this work forward. And I very much appreciate my ward district councillor input into this from Val and Ian as well. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Um, Mike? Uh, thanks. Just quickly, Judy, what, um, what if you know already, areas are being considered for further speeding restrictions? And, you know, is it possible to have other wards give input into that as well? Do you want me to come back, Chair? Yeah, please. Yeah, Absolutely, please, please, none. Please. Absolutely none are being considered at the moment. 
uh, because the speed management strategy is out for consultation at the moment. Um, and I'm not aware of any in um, Hitchin North, certainly, um, at the moment. I would hold fire um, for a week or two while the consultation takes place and then we can start again. Uh, because actually most of the activity about highways has been about um, government offering money that is unspendable um, in some instances, as we know, um, over schemes in places like St Michael's Road and some of the town centre schemes. Um, so new um, blocks of um, 20 mile hour zones are not on the table at the moment, but they very much will be when it comes to any new developments. And I think a lot of the speed management strategy is to scoop those up into places like Highover Farm, dare I mention it, um, and others where that will hopefully become the default position. But if you have specific things that you want to discuss um, in um, Hitchin North, please let's do so offline. Okay. Thanks, Judy. Thanks, Judy. Thanks, Judy. I mean, the last two things I've got, I mean, I think colleagues here will have seen that there is a, the police priority meetings uh, restarting. I think you've seen that, I think in the week of the 30th of November, there's not a precise date yet, but that will be restarting via Zoom, I understand. And there's a further meeting around Hitching, uh, Hitching Station access from the east side at, uh, on, on Friday that we can report back. At a future at a future meeting, are there any other reports that anyone about Simon? Yeah, just a question. The uh, for the greatest respect, the police reporting as to when the when those meetings are is somewhat hit and miss. Um, so <laughs> I I wasn't aware of that, albeit I had been notified of the previous one. So I'm not quite sure why I'm notified of some and not others. How do we how do we keep up to date on that? So I kept bringing Katie. I mean, this was in the the police priority sessions were announced in the Miz report that you get. Um, I think it was two weeks ago. Um, the and uh, that was in that was in let's say the Miz Miz report. Um, you can certainly get them vining up to Owl because the the Owl stuff uh, gives them uh, will tell you when that when they are. But if they're bringing, I've got Katie and then then Judy. Katie. Yeah, just to um, note on that, we actually did have a request from um, Becky Coates that we sort of collaborate with with police um, more closely, which we do. We always invite them to counsellors' surgeries. Um, and uh, as you say, uh, communication can be uh, difficult at times. Um, but I have had um, response uh, from uh, the lead officer for Hitchin, um, and uh, yeah, it, it was in our MIS, uh, the priority setting meetings. Um, and certainly, you know, if, if I become aware of those, I can um, send an email out to, to councillors as well. So that's fine. Oh, that'd be that'd be really that'd be really helpful because it's quite obviously sometimes you, you could easily overlook them in the the, com the stuff that come comes out in the midst. But yeah, Judy, um, I, I I regret to inform you that I do quite often um, overlook what comes out in the. <laughs> Is because um, there's just a limit to how much I can absorb in, in, a, in a given week. Uh, but I've actually been quite annoyed over the last pandemic months at the way um, those liaison meetings, mm. priority setting meetings, uh, fell off the end of a tunnel very quickly. And I have raised them many, many, many times. So I'm delighted to hear that something is happening about it. And also that... Um, um, Sally Phillips has requested a meeting with Jeanette Thompson and myself and Becky Coates um, in my um, community engagement um, hat, um, which is being um, planned as we speak. And it's one of the things I am going to push very strongly because I think those meetings are enormously important. And we have got some improvement in them um, where they've gone from the same three people sitting in the police station every few months ward by ward saying the same things to a slightly wider group of people um, having some sort of engagement with the police and I, I think it's really bad that it was let go because actually in other ways the police have been very good we had weekly and then fortnightly and now monthly meetings with the police and crime commissioner 
and all the community engagement people from across the county. Um, so it just seemed a shame that that fell off the end of a large cliff. Thanks, you. I mean, in fairness to say, if, if these are now on Zoom, and we've, as we've found, certainly, and I'm sure other colleagues have, actually having a, a Zoom meeting with um, residents actually isn't the worst thing to, to happen. It does mean some people that come that maybe wouldn't otherwise, in fairness to say, to uh, St John's Community Centre or, or, somewhere, or somewhere else. Um, but, uh, yeah, so, but we'll, we'll try and make sure we'll let you know once we've got a, see a date for it, we can make sure it's circulated around Hitching Councillors. Um, any, if the, are there any other ward reports anyone wants to bring? If not, thank you. Which sorry, ch just... sorry, Chair. Yeah, sorry. Go on, go on, I did. I did raise my hand, but I didn't know. If you oh, were. sorry. Um, sorry. Yeah, just to state that um, Louise Symes in planning is due to um, give an update in December on the Hitchin Have Your Say events, which we had on the sixth and seventh of March. Oh, yeah. Um, yep. So if that could just be put as an agenda item for next time, that'd be great. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Yeah, we'll make we'll log log that log that log that down. Um, Simon, was that a, was that a new? Yeah, so yeah, I was yeah. going to the EOB, but I guess it is a ward thing technically. But I I, I, I did hear a rumor that uh, I believe Councillor Clark and Councillor Hoskins were thinking something similar, but. As you're aware, way, way before I ever became a councillor, I understand that North Arts District Council had placed um, an application, Judy may know this, into um, the Chiltern area of outstanding natural beauty about extending the, uh, the, the tip of that to effectively reach Hitchin um, across to effectively to Priory Field. Um, but my, my main point was that there seems to be growing, uh, at least opinion, at least in my inbox, about some need uh, to protect uh, Priory Field. Uh, certainly it's been of huge value to the whole of the Hitchin community uh, during lockdown. I know personally when I walk my dog there, there's a significant amount of people stretching their legs, certainly during lockdown. I know the landowner has um, is trying their best to uh, prepare that land, shall I say, for uh, potential development in the future. And I'm just wondering, as, as, a, as, as, a, as a committee and as a council, um, I don't know, Judy's shaking head, I'll be interested to hear what she's going to say, wh whether there is anything we can do um, in that outside of the local planning um, commitments in order to make that a sort of community type asset around the Priory Field area, whether that's an extension, another application of the EONB to cover um, that, that, that sort of area or whether it's something more uh, local uh, with respect. But I'm just really interested in colleagues' opinion because I'm sure yeah. it's a wide issue. Thanks. Thanks, Simon. Martin? Yeah, um, so I used to represent um, many years ago now the uh, council on the AONB board and uh, I don't know of any suggestion of extending it. That would be quite an extension to come over to, to Priory Field. However, I'd certainly support the idea that we should look at a way of, um, of protecting that because, as, yeah, Simon's absolutely right. This is something that is, is a, a great value to uh, particularly that side of town where I used to live. Um, and I know it's very much valued. So uh, if we can do something, then yes, yes, indeed. Yeah. Sam? This is one of my half-baked, not fully thought through ideas, but can we just buy it? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, <laughs> sorry, I'm, not, I'm just that's, that is an interesting idea. Um, I would like to say more than that at this time. Uh, uh, Colin, comments from uh, from colleagues. Judy, did you have your hand up? Or has it gone down again? <laughs> no, I didn't have my hand up. I just didn't think we could make the extension that um, yeah. Simon was talking about. But I do absolutely support any realistic way we can do it and then I was just looking shocked at the idea of Sam having a half thought out half baked idea of anything. <laughs> That's all I, I have to say today. <laughs> I couldn't possibly comment. Um the uh, Paul <laughs> um I was gonna say on Priory Fields and Judy might want to comment on this uh garden <sighs> What we did with Pine Hill Fields, where we where we gave it uh, village green status, yeah, 
is, is that a possibility? I, I think that was a county um, driver, which is why I mentioned G Judy. Uh, but there was comments that uh, the family that own it have done things that uh, would stop that, you know, could stop that. Or is it an avenue worth uh, investigating? Can I have absolutely no idea, Chair? Um, but actually, it was Derek who did most of the work on yeah, um, on on the field. Um, so it might really be worth a conversation with Derek Ashley yep. about the uh, tricks, tools, and techniques that he used, uh, which were quite successful on that occasion. Well, look, I that think might not be the answer you want to hear, Paul, but no, that's what I'd recommend. No. Look, I think that I think the what we can agree upon now is that the committee. I think it's clearly supportive of us looking to see what what we can do in relation to protecting priory priory field, and that does seem to be something I'm sure that the we we can all agree upon, and we'll try and take away as a as an action point from from this meeting to see what what can be done and report back to a future to a future meeting. Is that? Is that acceptable, colleagues? Sorry, Chair, just as a, a bit wonderful. Thank Please, you. Sir. I really do appreciate that. But just as Councillor Collins had a half-baked idea, just to tell you, my aspiration is to make Priory Fields into a, a wildflower meadow. I think we could, uh, just like <laughs> lavender fields, we could make it a, 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 a wildflower meadow to, to stand amongst all councils in the country. It would be an amazing uh, several acres of, uh, of, of bee habitat. <laughs> it sounds wonderful. I think we'd all support the bees. That's absolutely fine. Um, and I'm very yeah. No, I think that sounds brilliant. But look, let's let's so let's take that away. I'll I'll certainly make sure we we pick that as an action point after the after the meeting. Um, so there's some. I've already mentioned some items for the next agenda. There's some already on your agenda this evening that we will report back on. Is there anything else? Any other suggestions for future agenda items that are we've not talked about this evening or are on that list in front of you? If not, thank you. Okay, which I think takes us to the um, end of end of the meeting. Um, thank you all very much. Oh, Simon, go on then. I'm oh, sorry, very I quick. just wanted to mention it in the formal meeting. Uh, H site HS2 in the local plan. I mentioned it in the town talk. Yep. Um, the uh, developer, Osprey, well, the potential developer, I should say, apologies, Osprey Holmes, uh, has undertaken um, an online consultation uh, as opposed to the standard um, uh, route of doing it in a community centre or something. Uh, the website is www.poundfields.com. Uh, and I would recommend everybody and anybody uh, goes online and gives the opinion on, on the proposed development on, on that site. Uh, it is, it, it's quite, I think it's quite a nice way of, of doing a consultation. Thank you, Chair. Thank, yeah, thanks. Thanks, Simon. That's, no, that's helpful. That's helpful. Yeah, brilliant. Okay, well, I think that brings us to the end of the meeting. And apologies, we've, we've run slightly over without having a, a break. Hope you don't, don't mind uh, too much, but, but I think it's been a really useful uh, discussion both here and at the town talk thanks all for your for your for your time and no doubt we'll speak to you soon and we'll hope those of you can we've got the surge that got the council of the surgery on 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 zoom on on saturday saturday morning at uh, 10 30 so we'll maybe seeing you all again very soon so thanks for your time thanks for your participation speak soon thank you chair